Welcome back to GearWire.com. This is Owen O'Malley. Uh, we're continuing our look at the Viper series from PV, uh, their uh, amp modeling and digital uh, multi-effect combo amps for guitar. Uh, this is the Tube Viper 60. Now, the Tube Viper, uh, in comparison to the Solid State Vipers, obviously adds tubes. Uh, the tubes, however, are in the power section. Uh, there is a, a 12AX7 in the preamp section, but that's used more like a buffer. It's not actually the distortion tube. Uh, the distortion is handled by an analog trans tube circuit. Uh, but in the power section, we've got a pair of 6L6s, which adds uh, a sort of a tube feel to the dynamics. Uh, um, you can really feel it when you kind of dig into the strings. So here is the A1 preset, the legend preset on the Viper 75. And now here is the A1 preset, the Legend preset, on the uh, Tube Viper 60. So I hear the difference in uh, when it's palm muted especially. It seems a little bit more punchy. Um, it's also not as crisp sounding, which can be good or bad, depending on how your tastes lean. Uh, let's listen to this guy clean, uh, so we can kind of get a better sense of the dynamic range. Uh, this is, I'm using the San Para pedal, by the way, uh, which is optional. Uh, okay. So here's their uh, the Tweed Deluxe uh, model preset. So uh, when it's clean, I think uh, the tube uh, vipers have a little bit more uh, of a dynamic range. Uh, softer playing is quieter, louder playing jumps out. It's not quite as compressed as the solid state vipers. Um, there's also a little bit of that, I guess you could call it tube sag. Uh, the solid state vipers uh, and, the, uh, and the tube vipers are both very responsive, very dynamic amps. Um, it's sort of, it's not even like one's better than the other, it's more like, uh, what is your taste? So. Now we already looked at the controls in the other video, but let's take a closer look at controls uh, for this guy anyway. Okay, so this is the front panel. Um, we've got two sections here basically. This is where you select your amps and effects, and this is where you edit the sounds of the amps and the effects. So. Right over here, we've got our stomp boxes first. Our amp right now is set on a deluxe, a, a clean deluxe, uh, which is basically, a, you know, your Fender Deluxe. Um, let's go over to our first stomp box here, which is a tube screamer. Well, let's hear it clean first. This is this is their sound. Let's uh, kick on this tube screamer. Pretty righteous sounding. Oh, we also got like, you know. Now, if that phaser is running a little slow for you, click that. And now we've got parameter one, and parameter two over here. Uh, so parameter one is usually the gain, or rather the speed. And parameter two is usually the depth. 
for this modulation effect. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, we've got a uh, multi octave generator, MOG, they call it. Final Fantasy III reference, maybe? <laughs> Lots of fun. We've got a flanger, auto wah. We've got a ring mod in here, which is kind of cool. Or stupid, depending on how you feel about ring mods. Uh, what's this? Oh, compressor pedal. No, that's the chorus. Here's the compressor. Looks like we've got some compression amount. Hard to tell. Gain. That seems like a combination threshold and makeup gain. Anyway, lots of cool stomp box effects over here. Um, let's bypass them for now. On the other side, we've got our rack effects. Uh, let's see, we've got another octave. This is just an octave down effect, so it's a different effect. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's our amp selection. Uh, we've got a rotary speaker emulator. We've got a pitch shifter. What the, uh, the effects are. Oh, here we go. All right. Well, those are your rack effects. We've got another flanger over here. Slap back. That's cool effects. We've got uh, our amp selection here. Now there's uh, 12 amps with two channels each, so they say that there's 24 channels basically on this amp. Uh, for example, like here's the Plexi clean. That slap back off. What is this? The Stray Cats? And now here's our Plexi Overdriven. As I scroll through here, you'll notice that these are changing. And even when I click the button on, there's little changes here in the EQ. Which basically means you've got 24 channels, and each of them has their own EQ preset. It's kind of cool. Um, now, there's two other effects on here other than the stomp box and the rack effects. Let's go to our overdriven plexi, just because I like that. Um, there is a delay and a reverb. Now, when you're clicking on effects, you'll notice that you've only got parameter 1, parameter 2 over here to switch. Um, but when you're in this edit mode, you've also got control over your delay and your reverb levels. So let's. Let's see, we've got our, we've got two controls for the delay here. We've got feedback and level. So let's bring the level up. Uh, 
Kind of cool. Now you can, uh, there's a tap delay right here, or the tap tempo function. Right there. All right, and now here's our reverb. Let's actually go to a clean channel here. Here's the reverb cranked all the way here. Cool, cool sounding reverb. Uh, now, if we move over a little bit, we can see just like on the tube, or rather the solid state Viper 75, uh, the tube 60 has a USB output, headphones output, and auxiliary input right here. Uh, unlike the 75, there is no power soak, it's just a master volume here. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, you know what? Why don't we take a listen to this USB output to hear what that sounds like? So, uh, as you can see, I've recorded a little something in sonar here. Um, basically, when you plug in the PV Viper, it's recognized as an ASIO compliant, ASIO compliant device. Um, weirdly enough, you can use it as an input, but not as an output. So you can use the headphone monitor to monitor while you're recording, but you're going to need, well, you're going to use just your computer sound, cord, sound card or a different interface if you want to actually listen, the, you know, play back to wh what you recorded. Um, so right now we're listening back through our little Lexicon Omega. Um, as you can see, when you, when you plug it in, it only recognizes a left channel. So it's just a mono input. And this is what it sounds like. So you know, not uh, the greatest speaker emulation, but uh, certainly useful. Uh, when you plug in the USB cord, it defeats the speaker output so it's good for silent recording and it's you know if you don't already have a USB interface it's really handy. So that was the Tube 60, the Tube Viper 60 from PV. Uh, in uh, our next video in the Viper series we're going to take a look at the San Para pedals. The San Para pedals uh, are the controller pedals that are optional for the Vipers but they really kind of unlock the full potential of the Vipers including a looping function which is pretty cool. Uh, so uh, until next time, thanks for checking us out. I'm Owen O'Malley, and you've been watching GearWire.com. See ya.